Thanks for checking out the Ideal Impact Podcast, where we discuss five key skills and the impact they can have on your life as well as some major issues in society. You ready to get after it? We're live. There he is. Why, where did this, why is it all of a sudden saying this meeting is being recorded? Like the last couple of podcasts, that voice, as soon as you hit record, it says this meeting is being recorded. There, that's always been that way. Zoom. No, it hasn't. It always says it on my end. It's never, I've never heard it until like the last three episodes. And it really, it, it throws off my we're live whenever we're doing it. And I don't like it. Does it? It sounds to me like you're making an excuse instead of taking ownership there. What can Randy do in this situation to do better at his we're live, regardless of what Zoom decides to do? I mean, I'm still doing it. I'm just saying I don't like the voice that says we're recording. We need to find a way to get rid of that voice. Why don't you just like ignore it? I can't ignore it. It's too loud. <laughs> So we're recording on a Saturday, which is super weird for us. So how's your how's your week been? It was a good it was a good long week. I mean, we're we're inching closer here to summer ending, and I'm going back to school, which just the thought alone of that is terrible. So I'm just trying to soak in what I have left. Yeah, it was so funny because like I feel I feel like when we were kids, I I loved going back to school. Like it was so cool for like a week. And then I was over it. I was always hoping the school year would just be like five days long, but it, it never happened. You're not going like, to find dreaming. the teacher that, that wants to go back. Like, I don't know any teachers that are like, yes, summer's ending. Let's, let's go back and do this again. Well, I felt that way in college. Like, I didn't want to go back. I can't imagine. It's different when... When I was a kid, like I, I, it was exciting. You got to see your friends. You got to, you know, experience. Everyone was wearing their new clothes and showing off their new folders and book bags and stuff like that. As a, yeah. an adult, you're going back to work. Right. That, and that they, sucks. <laughs> like the, the worst part is like everything that you did put into place last year, you just have to start over again. So now it's building all new routines and teaching them that kind of stuff. And that usually takes like two to three months which it sucks. It yeah, sucks. It, it's definitely hard. And like we talked about on the last episode, just education in general is, is it's such a grind. And, and I don't even think it's such a grind for just teachers anymore, just the students and uh, it's, it's broken. Um, but we'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk more about that uh, in, a, in a, another different episode, because today we have something extremely exciting there that i think we wanted to talk about don't we are we starting with wins because you're throwing me off here if we're just jumping right into this oh, are we starting with wins i don't know how do you how do you feel about us doing wins in the beginning what my so let me let me back step before you get into your answer to that question so i feel that we've lost our way a little bit with like that love and doing. feeling we've lost that we love and feeling love and feeling. that what was the all-time greatest soundtrack by the way hands down for sure top gun oh, yeah like easy and the, the the beach volleyball scene my god uh. <laughs> i mean what about the new top gun the beach volleyball scene it's just, it, just, it just it just didn't hit the same it wasn't the same i don't know man it's pretty fucking good i mean the movie was was better than i expected but we are so <laughs> we went from our wins <laughs> to are we gonna do wins to we got off off of our intent of the podcast to top gun and uh well if you think about it like a bunch of dudes. that top gun that was 30 30 years in the making i'm like you're going like from top gun one to top gun two that's a big gap in between so like it's a huge the anticipation really built up and I thought it lived up to the hype. I enjoyed it. I was actually, so Top Gun for anybody <laughs> out there <laughs> is one of my all-time favorite movies. And I catch shit for that all the time. And it's not just the the beach volleyball scene. It's it's the entire thing. Like I felt like back at that point in time, it was still cool to be patriotic and it still carried a different, you know, feeling with it. And when I would, you hear the music and you see the F-14s taking off from the, the aircraft carrier, 
it would just get me so fired up. And it still does. Every time I watch that movie, it just gets me so fired up and, you know, proud to be an American at that. Well, still, like, I'm still proud to be American. I just, uh, I'm just very worried about where we're going as a country. And that's part of the reason why we started doing, we're, we're tying it back. I see what you did there. You plugged Top Gun intentionally, knowing that somehow I would tie it back to what we're doing with ideal impact right well that that that's, was that's not cool. my intent at all i just no, wanted to oh, talk okay. about a cool movie in top gun and i think that it's still cool to be patriotic and that's why well, it we is are, why we are doing what we're doing it is you're right it is cool but i feel like at the societal level people almost frown upon it at this point like not not everyone i'm generalizing here i i think Oh, it's incredible that I have to clarify that I'm generalizing so often. Now. <laughs> uh, it, it, like I made that post, I made a Facebook post today about, uh, well, how, how did I word it? it? It was something along the lines of the chronic health issues that you blame on not working out were probably caused by not working out. And also, which I didn't put this in there, but also not taking care of yourself from a nutrition perspective as well. And like people and two people commented on it and were like, that's not the case all the time. Well, yeah, of course, like there are exceptions to everything, but generally speaking, the chronic health issues that we face in our country are caused from laziness and a lack of discipline. It's people shoveling garbage into their mouth and sitting on the couch, not taking care of themselves. Like it, right. it, it's as simple as that. And then people are making excuses about the food and all. listen, the food in our country is poison. It's atrocious for the most part. But again, you choose to buy that. Stay on the outside of the store, buy produce, you know, try to. And I, I get that that stuff can also be expensive. Well, then well, medical bills less. are expensive as well. <laughs> right. Medical bills are super expensive. But anyway, so we digress. If um, only but anyway. there was like some like local farms where you could purchase things. It'd be crazy. You know, you know, that would be pretty crazy. And it's almost like where we live specifically, there are a, more than one of those things. Right. Like you can go do that. And, and sure, like, are you going to pay slightly more for it? Yes. But I can also justify paying slightly more when one, I know what is in the food and two, right. I'm helping support a local business instead of Walmart. Exactly. You know where it's coming from. And I know right. the people that are raising it. And I trust them. Yes, yes. Except for that Chip Brown character, I feel like at some point we gotta have Chip on the show because now we're we mentioning him again. And people we could like, do a oh, we could do Chip a plug Brown. for Chip Brown right now. Uh, yeah, plug him. Brown Brown's Freezer Meats. It's a local farm in Leroy, Ohio. Mm. And uh, yeah, man, they, they sell meat. You just go there, you order what you want, and they get it to you. And then you eat. Speaking it. of which, I gotta do that. I do have to place an order with with Brown Farms. Yeah. It's good stuff. Old, it's genius. Old brown eye. Old brown eye. Um, but anyways, so let's tie this all back to where to where we started. So we we're talking about wins, and Randy asked, "Are we going to start with our wins?" And my point there was, Randy, let me ask you this: Why did we start a podcast? In your, from your memory, we started a podcast because there was a lot of things in the world that were annoying us, and we wanted to talk about them and get them out there. Exactly. And that was, you know, I talk about them and, and also like have conversations about maybe some things that we can do to move the needle a little bit, which will eventually lead us into what we'll talk about next, which is the ideal Tough Rocks March for Heroes, which we're super Ooh. excited about. But somewhere in there, so, you know, we, we really, and, and part of that intent was, I just, I, so I love, and I've said this before, but I love the Joe Rogan podcast because he just has interesting conversations with interesting people about interesting topics. And even then, like, I, I look at him as one of the greatest, if not the greatest talk show, podcast host, whatever you want to call it, of our time, for sure. And not every episode is good. I was listening to an episode when we were down in Texas. I turned it off. It, it, was, it wasn't good. And the recent one with Post Malone, like, I'm starting to listen to it, and they're just kind of like, I don't, I don't know what they're talking about, but lizards and if dinosaurs. I mean, sometimes they get, like, they get too high. And yeah, then that conversation yeah. <laughs> just goes out on a, who the hell knows what they're talking about. Right, for sure. But my point being is I just, I like listening to that. I like listening for the most part to interesting people talk about interesting things and interesting subjects. And 
uh, part of the inspiration that I drew from was my conversations with Sean Power. Sean and I, he would come over and hang out at my house, me, him, and, and Callie, and we would just have really good conversations. And this was before I got into this whole self-development path and, and everything that we do now with the reading and coaching and, and the masterminds and all of this stuff. And I'm like, man, like... I just want, I just want to do this for fun. Like, I don't care if I make any money off of it. I just want to have really good, deep conversations because I think these are the type of conversations that we talk about those problems, like you said, and, and eventually maybe through conversation, we come to, to good solutions. And I feel like we got away from that for a while on the podcast. We are so I'm in a mastermind group and a lot of people in that group do podcasts and they're very entrepreneurial based and trying to help other people on their entrepreneur journey. And I, I feel like we kind of got down that path unintentionally and we made it very structured and we're doing these wins and asking about books and all that stuff. I like and books. I mean, I like books and there's no reason we shouldn't talk to them, but I like, or talk about them, but it's just like, let's do it when it feels right. Let's just have conversations and we'll see how it goes. And some of the best are our, our, our top performing episodes are just me, you and, and Brian Who? hanging out and, and talking. Yeah. That Brian guy. <laughs> um and and lena lena is still one of our our top six podcast episodes because again like we're we're just having a really good conversation so we want to get back to that um and also talk about things that we want to talk about and that's the beauty of being self-employed and, and having your own podcast you can you can kind of do true. whatever you want we can say whatever we want and then you mentioned yeah. earlier that you have you feel like you have to like stop and apologize and say hey i don't want to offend anyone by saying this luckily we can say whatever we want and if it offends you that's your fault right right and that's true too so one of the biggest so here we'll do i'll do a win just because it has come up organically through our conversation a big win for me lately has been just leaning into my authenticity just being who i am i'm not being intentionally offensive or intentionally controversial but when something's on my mind i'm i'm gonna say it when i feel like doing something or wearing something whatever it is like i, I just do it and it's so empowering it's freeing it's this incredible feeling because i didn't do that for a majority of my life i didn't even know who i was for a majority of my life i didn't really have my own voice i was just a product of my environment and it took me a long time to kind of like figure out like okay of my environment what are the things that really stick and, and really feel true to me so it's funny i i've done that so i've just been you know and I get, I get some shit on social media and people making fun of me and, and talking shit in the comments on it, you know, and everything, but it doesn't bother me at this point. It really doesn't. And that's a great feeling too, because I used to get so fired up when people would talk shit or say something stupid in my opinion. And now I just, I, I just have a conversation with them and now I'm challenging people. I'm saying, Hey, if you disagree with me and, and you want to come on the show, like, come, like, let's have a great conversation. As long as we can treat each other with respect and like adults come on the show, have a great conversation. Um, and then also through that, like I'm posting, just being myself. I had somebody who I actually look up to in the mastermind group. We haven't, we've talked a couple of times. We haven't really connect, gotten a good chance to connect one-on-one. -on -one somebody that I look up to greatly just with his story and the action that he's taken over the last couple of years, he reached out to me and was like, Hey man, I got a business idea that I want to run past you. I just, I love how boldly authentic you are. I love that you're just, you know, yourself and you, you're, you're not afraid to offend people or anything like that. He's like, you know, let's talk about this. So he and I are talking about that and, and doing some cool things together. But my point being, be yourself. Stop worrying about what other people think. Stop worrying about offending everyone. You don't always have to be politically correct. You know, time and place, obviously. Don't try to be intentionally offensive or anything like that, but just be yourself and good things will come from that if you let go of what other people think and care about. I mean, you should be able to express your opinion without having to worry about how others are going to feel about it. As long as I'm being respectful when I do it, Right. And I shouldn't like, why are you getting offended? That's the, that's the issue. Why are you taking offense to this? Because you, you can't have somebody out there who has a differing, a differing opinion than you. That doesn't yeah. mean that you should come at them and call them names and tell them they're stupid. Talk to them, maybe have a conversation, maybe understand their point, let them understand your point. People can't have a conversation anymore. It's just social media warriors out there behind a keyboard. Oh, you're an idiot. 
you have a Superman. Superman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're so as the nerd with he said he called me a nerd for drinking out of my Superman coffee mug. I'm like, first off, what's wrong with Superman? Yeah. Yes. Sorry that I like to have a little bit of my inner child, uh, you know, still out there and present. And again, I'm being on my authentic self. I thought it was hilarious that he's called me a nerd. And secondly, I would be 95% of the time, maybe now nah, I would say 99% of the time, none of these people would say anything like that to another person's face. They well, would right. have no guts to do that. But why, but why do it to begin with? Why? Why can't you just have the conversation? Why does it well, always have to be you putting somebody else down? Like it doesn't well, no, make sense. You don't, to me. you don't do that when you're trying to have a conversation and like learn and understand and you don't just automatically start by verbally assaulting the person. That's not, <laughs> that's not how to communicate effectively. Right no, now. you like, you share an opinion with like, Hey, I like this type of cereal. And I'm like, Oh, fuck it. Well, you're an idiot. <laughs> cereal blows nuts. And so do you. <laughs> you like tricks? <laughs> Stupid rabbit. How Those dumb is that? <laughs> yeah. Like, you're a man. <laughs> oh, I can't call you a man. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I don't I don't know what your tone is. You're, right. you're a person. Yeah. Yeah. I identify as authentically me. I mean whatever that means. Take it, take it or leave it. The fact that like whoever you were talking to from your mastermind has to like come out and say, like, you're not afraid to offend people. Like that shouldn't even be like on the table in the conversation. Like you're just sharing your opinion. And if other people take offense to it, like that's their problem. Stop. What are you, look at your life, look at how you're thinking about things and stop taking offense to everything that somebody says. Well, and you're giving me, if, if you allow me to offend you, you're then giving me all the power. I have all the power because I just affected how you feel emotionally and you right. just relinquish that power. So if obviously you don't like me, you don't like my opinion or whatever. Why would you, why would you give me the satisfaction? Not that I get satisfaction out of offending people, but there are people out there that do, but potentially give me the satisfaction of that by telling me that you're offended or you're upset by, by my opinion. Like just, just keep scrolling. Emotional okay intelligence, too. keep it in check. Dude. Yeah. And, and again, like, that's why we want to talk. That's why I, 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 I don't intention, I'm not trying to be intentionally offensive, but I am trying to be intentionally controversial, I would say, because I want to have conversations. Like, I, yes, I, I want you to have a different opinion than me. I want to talk about it. I want to try to understand why you have a different opinion than I am or than I do. But don't, <laughs> it's hard that for me to have a conversation with you when you're calling me an idiot or telling right. me that logical thinking or critical thinking, I think you said, is not my strong suit. And and the best part is what gives me a lot of satisfaction is how far I've come personally from an emotional intelligence standpoint and being able to respond to them in a respectful manner. And what a lot, what I've seen recently is by me doing that, they eventually reciprocate with the same. And we actually have a conversation because I call them out on that. I'm like, do you think by calling me an idiot, like I'm, I'm <laughs> like, you're, we're going to get anywhere with this. Like, let's just talk. Like, let's just talk. It's okay for you to not agree with me. Maybe I'm wrong. There's been plenty of, there's been times where I am wrong. Somebody pointed something out about that Australia, like currency, Australia going to a cashless society and um, uh, the, the, the lack of, of firearms uh, available for civilians in Australia. And they had some really good points. I, I you know, I didn't mean to say that cash, they are for sure going cashless, but there are signs that they're progressing towards that. And same thing in the United States as well. And eventually we had a really good conversation. And like, that's what it's all about. It's just trying to understand like, hey, you know, maybe I'm, and I said this the other day too, is like, go into the conversation with the intent or the, the, the thought that I'm wrong. If I go in like, hey, maybe I am wrong. And let me at least, it helps me listen though better if I go in with that mindset if that makes sense it makes sense it's just that it's it's annoying that it's adults that act this way because we're trying to teach kids like treat others the way you want to be treated and then you see like maybe your parents or someone you look up to acting that way so what are you teaching right. you're teaching your kid to be an asshole so now we just have a society full of entitled assholes and no one can have a conversation with each other 
what do you think an effective way is to to teach? And you just kind of hit on it, but just to really paint the picture, what's an, an effective way to, to teach any of these skills? Intentionality, discipline, I think the big one that we're talking about right now is emotional intelligence and, and being able to communicate. How do you teach those things? To kids or like to, to adults? I would say, I mean, either. I, I don't know if you really teach them too much differently because I hit on it and then you hit on it. Modeling, but, like you have to model yeah, it. Exactly. If I'm out there saying one thing and then doing another, well, people are going to see that and that's what they're going to buy into. I can't be yeah. like, oh, you got to you gotta be respectful to people and then have a conversation with someone like, no, oh, you're a fucking idiot. You're wrong. Well, model it. Model what you want others to, to learn. Yeah. And I, I think we, we are um, a product of the do as I say, not as I do generation and i think that was pretty common not just you know with our parents or anything like that you know that was that was just a common thing but now right. it's like yeah do do what i do and we'll be good and like you said setting that example modeling and it all comes back to that that a really good example of that is taking ownership typically if i go into a conversation where maybe in a leadership position right i go in and my rep messed up so that i'm going back to my corporate job <laughs> my rep made a mistake they didn't do something right and if i go into it with hey you messed up like you made a mistake the first thing that they're going to do is throw their you know their shield up throw their their defense mechanisms up where if i go into it and said hey listen you know um i i don't think like we we practice this enough i don't maybe i didn't explain it correctly but this mistake happened it's not a big deal but i just want you to know that i take ownership of that let's work to see what we can do to make this better then their defenses are down they're like oh no he took ownership that's a good leadership like hey you know hey no and typically what will happen is you get reciprocated with ownership now hey you explained everything correctly i did the training i just forgot i made a mistake on this one it won't happen again cool great and then if it doesn't happen again then you just did that but chances are if you go in and attack this person they're not going to hear a word you say because their ego just got, you know, punched in the gut. They're not going to hear a word you say. And then they're going to be like, fuck that guy. And then are they going to put in, <laughs> are they going to put in the same amount of effort that they would if you went in and actually talked to him like a human being? Of course not. Now, if someone comes to me, like, and I, I got to take ownership in this situation too, but if they come to me and they're like, Hey, you fucked up, you did this wrong. You did this wrong. You did this wrong. I, it, it doesn't make me want to, to work harder for that person. So I might, do less now that's on me right. but if they would have came to me and just be like hey you know maybe i didn't explain this as well and then i i come back and like no i think you did i just messed up and forgot to do this like it's a conversation it's not two people on the defense the whole time yeah yeah and that's how you influence as a leader instead of um dictate what is happening and i think that's a much healthier relationship and i will say one of the things that i think i did right because obviously i did a lot of things wrong as a leader and i do things wrong every day one of the things i feel like i really did right was shifting eventually transferring that ownership because at some point we've done everything that we can as leaders and if that is still an opportunity area we have to shift the ownership to them but if you've done your job by taking ownership up until the point where it's time to shift the ownership then that should be a fairly easy conversation it's like hey we've been working on this for four months and it hasn't really gotten any better i'm going to ask you is there anything that i can possibly do as your supervisor manager leader whatever you want to put the title on there is there anything else that I can do for you that you think would be beneficial? And, and having those conversations throughout that time too, right? You want them to give you some ideas and give you some feedback because your idea might not be what they need to get better. But ultimately at the end, when it's time to transfer that ownership, if they say, hey, listen, you've done everything for me. I'm, I'm appreciative of your help over the last four months. I need to take ownership. Chances are they're going to take ownership. It's going to be an easy, easy transition. But if you just continue to beat them up and not take any ownership as a leader, that's going to be a much more difficult conversation, much more ugly conversation. Chances are, too, where it's coming to time. It's like, hey, we've done this. We have to do something at this point. So I got I'm going to give you a month to take the ownership of it, correct it. Otherwise, you know, we're going to have to figure something out, whether that's a verbal warning, whether it's finding you a different position, something along those lines. Well, it goes back to that model. I mean, if they see you taking ownership, then odds are you're not even going to have to have that conversation. They're just, they're just going to start taking ownership as well. Yeah. Imagine if our political leaders did, did, did that. 
So go ahead. I mean, it, it happens with little kids. Like I could sit here and tell them blue in the face and tell my kids why it's important to exercise and do things. But when they see me go out there on a daily basis and exercise, then they start asking me, Hey, can we work out with you? And I have to get better at it. Cause I'm always like, not always. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I just, I just want to be left alone and work out by myself, but they're, <laughs> they're coming to me and asking me like, can, can I work out? I should be every single time. I should be like, absolutely. Let's go. Yeah. And, and you model a positive behavior. And when you're lazy and you're, you don't respect your body, you don't respect your future self and you sit there and you smash Twinkies and Ho-Hos and pop and man, I used to love some fucking Twinkies, man. Listen, everybody, well, maybe not everybody, but most people love a good Twinkie. I haven't had a Twinkie in years. Well, it's all about balance. Dude, well, let me me say this before I get into that. We're, Callie and I are at the grocery store earlier. Which one? Can you say it? Giant Eagle. Ooh, I wouldn't go there. Yeah, Why? I just went to Giant Eagle the other day. I won't go back. It, well, because it's so expensive. It's it's ridiculous, and yeah. just just like it was not a good shopping experience. Did you go to the Painsville one? I did. I oh, did. the Painsville Giant Eagle was a shit show. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was different. It was different than what I remember it. Yeah, it's a shit show. It's a it's a train wreck. Uh, yeah. but so we were at Manor, uh, the one on six fifteen, and there's a there was a woman in front of us, and she was in a motorized cart and you know just you know, looked horribly unhealthy and she's unloading her little motorized cart onto the self-checkout with a, a 12 pack of pepsi another cold pepsi so she could drink it right there a pack of swiss cake rolls and it, like literally a cart full of processed sugar and i'm like what like and and that she was older but you could tell just for her entire life she was probably the same age as my mom and I, I give my mom a lot of credit like and my and my dad I, I my dad I was so impressed the other day I was at his house and we were working on the Plymouth that we bought from Randy's grandma and he's bending down kneeling on the ground standing up getting down standing up going to get tools and he's so what's this is 2023 so he just turned 66 67 67 shit I mean and he's a chronic smoker too, like, but he's <laughs> always been active. And recently my parents have done a much better job of watching what they eat. My dad's lost a ton of weight. My mom, looking back a couple of years ago at some pictures, my mom has done an incredible job of losing weight. And they're probably the same age as this woman that was sitting in this cart, getting up, drinking processed garbage. My parents have really done a great job since I was younger, just progressively eliminating those things from their lives. Not eliminating them completely, I should say, but limiting them because the whole point of all this discipline, in my opinion, is to create balance in my life. I have, I am super disciplined throughout the week. So on Sundays, I can have donuts in the morning. I can have pizza at night. I can have a couple beers and enjoy myself and unwind and not feel guilty about it because I was extremely disciplined from Monday to Saturday. Yeah, I mean, you have to like, we've talked about this before. It's a dichotomy and you you can go overboard. You can be, you can be too disciplined and you can take it too far. And that's when you lose the balance and then it, it stops, it stops being fun. Like yeah. I used to overdo it on certain things and it started to affect other areas of my life and I pulled back on it and it's been better. Like it's hard for me mentally to, to wrap around, like, I don't have to do these crazy intense workouts every single day. Like being physically active is being physically active. And as long as I'm doing something, it's better than doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've, I've gone the opposite route lately. <laughs> I think you pushed it really hard when we were a little bit younger. Not that I, I took it easy. I, I mean, I did to a point, but when you and I worked together, we worked out together. I should say we, we pushed it. That was brutal. But recently, like I just love I'm very big on, I don't like long workouts. So these hour, hour and a half runs, those are brutal for me. But when I'm at the gym, we did, Callie and I did like a 40 minute workout today and it was, it was intense. It was tough. It was brutal. I was sweating like crazy. And then I went gold for four rounds at jujitsu. That's what I just, I love getting after it. And the biggest difference between now and before, like I'm, I'm in so much less pain because I actually recover. I take time to recover. I stretch every day. 
I'm doing ice baths, I'm getting in the sauna, like actually taking care of my body. You're also in a different situation where you're, you need hip surgery. Now you potentially have a knee injury. If, if I was in that, it would be different. Like I would probably have to dial it back a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'm just getting, I'm getting older. My body's beat up from all the things I used to do between wrestling and powerlifting and now jits. It's just, I'm not going to do what I used to do. Like my, I'm, I'm not in my twenties yeah. anymore. I can't do those things anymore, but I can still do something. So like, I'm still lifting. I'm still getting out and rucking. Like, I don't have to run all the time. Like, a, a, if you take a ruck and you go out and you hike some miles, and it's it's not easy. Yeah, and that leads us into our next topic. So we got wildly off track. <laughs> well, no, this is this is how we segue. It's all we talk. Up. We talk about rucking. Like, we just did that ten mile ruck, and I, what that took us what a little over three hours. I think three hours and seven minutes to be exact. Yeah, was, and it. If it was just you and I, I think we probably could have done it substantially faster. But even it was so, a I was workout. I was dripping with soaked. soaked, soaked. I looked like I peed my pants. And then, like the next day, like my calves and hamstrings are pretty like they were they were tight because mm -hmm. there were some there were some inclines on that. So like you don't have to go out and run a marathon every time you're you're going out for a training session. You can go out a nice walk and you'll get you'll get the benefits from it. Yeah, it's just like I think. A majority of society, <clears throat> if we just focused on moving daily, like having an hour of intentional movement per day, it doesn't have to be a consecutive hour. If you go out and you walk for 30 minutes and stretch for 30 minutes, you know, later in the day and kept to the outside of the grocery store, it would be, <laughs> you wouldn't have pharmaceutical companies getting billions and billions of dollars every year because there would be much less chronic disease. And again, for anybody out there who's like, oh, that's not always the case. Yes, of course, it's, it's not, not always, always the, case. the case. Some people, you're going to have chronic illnesses, even though you do everything right. We get but, it. But you know what helps generalize. chronic illnesses? What helps chronic illnesses? Movement and proper nutrition. <laughs> exactly. And sleep. They like You, and you rest, read yes. like you read a lot of things. Like I, I read Peter Atia's book, and he's all about longevity. The three things that he recommends, exercise, nutrition, sleep. Mm -hmm. that's it it's not like anything crazy it's not like going out and like you don't have to go out and try to win the fucking super bowl every workout that you're going you're going out on you just something is better than nothing but who's going to carry the boats Randy? who's going to carry the boats but the not boats. everybody not everybody's going to carry the boats that's true not everyone you're actually you know what that is a great way to put it not everyone is men and for Anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, we're quoting David Goggins and his psychotic mindset of, you know, who's going to carry the boats, and meaning like who's going to do the hard shit. And I, I think there needs to be obviously people in our society that is that are built and that are trained to do that hard shit. But there are also people in society that need to be ready to be doctors and to be, you know, cooks. Like, let's say the shit hits the fan, the world, like society collapses, like there's that's when clearly defined roles, both from professional standpoints and sexual standpoints and gender and all that shit. Guess what? That stuff will come back really quick when we don't have this monstrosity of a society that we live in today. Because it's like, if you don't have any useful skills, guess what's going to happen? You're probably going to die. I mean, that's reality. When back in the day, if you didn't have any fucking useful skills, no one had any use for you and they didn't have, you were a burden to society. Now we make all these excuses and burden, you know, like mediocrity is accepted. It's just, I don't know. We have things so ass backwards. And again, when you look back at through history, this is exactly the time when societies typically collapse because they get so complacent and so soft and so undisciplined that the world well not the world but that specific society just ceases to exist the same way that it did before at least I mean, let's look at it in like the simplest of terms like there's going to be a point in time where mr goggins can no longer carry the boats like there's going to be a point in time where he hits an age and his body has had enough where he's no longer carrying the boat so if you yes we're we're disciplined we preach discipline we like getting after it but there's also going to be a time for us where, where that getting after it is going to dial back a bit so what is the ultimate goal the ultimate goal is to be here on earth as long as we possibly can that i mean that's what we want to do we don't want to die in our 40s could it happen 
Absolutely. But if you focus on just moving, eating a balanced diet, and just getting sleep, you are setting yourself up for a longer life. Well, now sprinkle a little mindfulness work in there, like working on your mindset, reading, meditation, coaching, podcasting, all of these things that have a positive impact on your mindset. So you combine that where you do a little bit of movement and it doesn't have to be every day. So I set an hour of intentional movement per day, but let's say you do it five days a week. That's pretty good. You eat very well, five, five and a half, six days a week. That's pretty good. You're, you're going to make massive improvements in your life with those small actions. And it doesn't have to happen overnight. And we talk about that a lot as well. But right. Yeah. The, you don't and, have and to it, you don't have to get crazy with it. Like you don't have to count count your calories. You don't have to do macros. Right. You, I don't do 80, any of that 20. shit anymore. 80 yeah. 20. I don't do any of that shit anymore. I did for a long time and it was beneficial. I would recommend it to people who have no clue about you know, how much they're putting into their body. But I did it for, for a few years. I was, you know, I counted my calories. I counted my macros. Now I don't need to do that stuff because I, I created a habit of it. I, I know roughly how much protein I'm getting, how much carbs, you know, how much fat. I know roughly those things. So if you practice discipline and do what's really hard, counting calories, counting macros for a little while, and you get a good understanding of what's going into your body, well, now it's habit. Now you, it doesn't really take discipline. It's just habit at that point. And you can use that discipline in other areas of your life. But another thing that you said there was our goal is to be here for a long time. And it is. But at the same time, one of the huge reasons why I wanted to not, you know, start or excuse me, one of the huge reasons why I want to start our own business, among other things, obviously helping other people, giving back to the veteran community, but was I want to not only be here for a long time, I want to be here for a good time too. It was really hard for me to enjoy life when I was stuck at a desk in corporate America, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. You know, it was it was brutal. It's like, okay, cool. So I'm doing that a majority of my week, and then I get two days to do to to have to myself. Well, wait, on those two days, I gotta cut the grass. I got to go grocery shopping. I got to wash my truck. I got to go to the house. Yeah, exactly. All kinds of tasks that you have to do. Right. And that's where I've shifted becoming an entrepreneur and surrounding myself with people who have a, a much better mindset than I do has shifted that, you know, a recent example of it. I'm sitting here. I'm still not making much money. You know, Callie and I are figuring things out. We moved back to Ohio. We have a lot of bills now and, I old me would have completely went into shutdown mode. Like I would have been like, Hey, we're not, we're eating ramen noodles. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I got to cut the grass. I have to do everything myself. I have to lay these floors myself, but now I'm sitting there. So I cut the grass one time and it took me two hours in this, in this yard. And I'm like, I can't afford to spend two hours every single week doing this. I need to find somebody else to cut my grass, which I pay. So I'm paying like 30 bucks an hour for now where I can go focus on generating more revenue through our business or getting another passive investment deal where I can make not only that 30 bucks an hour back, but I can make $150 an hour by, you know, focusing on my business. So it's, it's, you know, shifting that mindset. And it's like, Hey, I don't, I don't really, yeah. Discipline means doing hard things when you don't want to do them, but if I had to cut my grass, I would. I don't have to. I can hire somebody else to do that. I don't have to wash my truck. I can run it through the car wash. Does it cost me a little bit more money? Yes, but that time is 100% worth the investment to me. My, it's all about looking at everything now as an investment and what's my return on that investment. But you're not doing that 100% of the time. Like you just said, like you're no. you're, you're talking about ways to generate. How, okay, if I don't mow my lawn, I have two hours right there where I could probably generate some revenue. But look, like if you look at some of the shit you've done in the last year, like you would not have done those things. And if you were still working your corporate job, like you moved oh, to no. Texas for a couple months, you guys went, what you went hiking at big Ben. What else have you done? Yeah, yeah man. Uh, so I went down to the Gulf coast. I, I had an incredible day there. I went to a nature preserve. Um, what else? I, it's, it's, it's actually crazy. This is why I journal because I've done so many crazy I'm shit. I left my corporate job. Up in March, we really got deep into Ideal. Now we're launching a whole different portion of it with these ruck marches. 
moved, so went from, in the last, just over a year, I went from owning one home to three homes. I mean, it's been a wild, let's say 18 months. It's been, it's been freaking wild. Yeah. Yeah. But it's been memorable. Absolutely. Like in the grand scheme of things, we can talk about money and revenue and houses and cars, but when you die, like you can't take any of that shit with you. It's all about creating these life experiences. And that, I mean, that's what I've like, I've never really focused on that before. And that's what I'm starting to have my mind shift to. It's more about creating experiences than it is about how much, how much, yes, it's nice to have money, but right, of course. You, can't, you can't take the money with you. It's, it, no. You die, it's gone. Well, yeah. And, and the thing is, okay, so how do I create these life experiences with the least amount of financial burden possible? So one of the big things that we thought about, so we're, like you said, we did a lot of traveling when we were in Texas and we did a lot of that within the state of Texas because it's ridiculous how big that freaking state is. Everything's drove, bigger in Texas. Dude, 14 and a half hours. Like from where we, we, we drove 14 and a half hours and we're still in the state of Texas. Like that's incredible. But one of the biggest things that I, like you said, I'm like, I haven't done enough of this. I haven't done enough of this in my life because I was stuck behind a desk and, and I was too worried about money. That was the other thing. And I was just stashing it away into a savings account, which really at that point, it doesn't, you're losing money by sticking money into a savings account because right. if inflation is 7%, my savings account makes 0.05%. I'm losing money every year. But I started thinking like, okay, well, how do I do, how do I have the experiences and how do I have the things that I want without necessarily having to pay for them myself? And Turo is a good example of that. I really wanted, I've always wanted a Tacoma. I've always wanted a Toyota Tacoma. My dad had one when I was a little kid and I just thought it was the coolest truck. Marty McFly, Back to the Future, the black (laughs) Tacoma. Oh, Oh my God. I'm like, well, if I buy my Tacoma and I put it on Turo, And it breaks even after doing research and looking at trucks on Turo. I'm like, I could easily break even on this. Well, now I have a a 2022 Tacoma TRD off-road. That's a $50,000 truck almost that I I don't pay for. Somebody who rents it and drives it for a week, they just made my entire car payment that month. Actually, I profit. If somebody rents it for a week, I make profit at that point. And the other thing that we were thinking about with Texas with all that travel was having a camper would make things way easier for us with the two dogs like we went to fort worth we had to find an airbnb that was dog friendly then we had to put the dogs in the truck it was a huge pain in the ass and the same thing we went to vanderpool texas which was like in hill country which is a little bit like west of austin incredible it's beautiful i love it there but it was like a five-hour drive and we had to get an airbnb we had to find an airbnb that was pet friendly and it was expensive i'm like hey i can buy a camper i can finance this thing pay $150 a month to finance it. And if I rent it out two, two nights a month on average, it only not only pays for itself, it also pays for my insurance too on it. And I just talked to somebody who rents out, he has a camper van, paid $75,000 for this camper van. In the last two months, he's generated $6,000 in revenue from renting out that camper van. So it's about adjusting your mindset. It's the Robert Kiyosaki, it's rich dad, poor dad. I can't afford it or how can I afford it? And that's, there's so much power in adjusting your mindset there. Right. I mean, that's like how we got, not the affordable farting part, but that's how we got onto this whole ideal thing. Like, how can I do things that I enjoy and make a living out of? Yeah, it's a great point. That's a great point. And that's why we didn't do things. We didn't do so many other things before this, like the, the window washing and the pool boys. <laughs> yes. Right. There, there was a point in time, Randy and I thought about being pool boys, which I, I mean, think we came up with some cool. Would have been a little fun. We came up with some cool names. I thought two dudes, but... one pool. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> was that there one some... Yeah. And then we were going to do what well, was like, uh, there was a Sandlot one we came up with. It's like peppercorn, peppercorns, pool boys or something. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> lotioning and oiling. Lotioning, oiling, oiling, lotioning. But like That's even, classic. even with ideal, like it's constantly, it's constantly it's evolving. evolving. It's not, it hasn't stayed how it was initially because we're constantly looking at it. We're evaluating it. And we're like, okay, well, how can we change this to make this align more with the things that we enjoy, which brings us 
to the finally ideal tough rucks <laughs> we finally segue to it. we've mentioned it a couple of times but this is the perfect segue to it because this is like now we're aligning things that we enjoy which is physical activity and we're using this to give back to the veteran community and we're using that physical activity to inspire people and show them that they're capable of way more than they would have ever thought so you know, before we get into the March for Heroes for a second, we did that 10 mile ruck last, was that last Sunday? Time was, uh, uh, yeah, it was last Sunday. Time, time, first of all, is a weird concept to me, but I'm losing track of it since getting back from Texas, I've been pretty busy. But yeah, so last Sunday went out for 10 miles and it was, it, it was not easy. Like that was, that was a challenge. So we were at uh, Girdled Road Reservation here in Concord, Ohio. It was beautiful. And there are some pretty good, inclines um, there's some there's some good hills there. yeah there were some good hills but it was fun like i had a blast because we were talking we were walking we're getting after it we're having good conversations because the people that came out were you know stoked to do this they have great mindsets and it didn't feel like 10 miles yes it was physically challenging i was soaked in sweat my hip is still torn up from my from my uh backpack my my um, hit my waist belt but everyone that did it was like oh that really wasn't that bad to and to think to go out to walk 10 miles with a weighted backpack like that's that's not easy to do but no it's not easy to do yeah but you're capable of doing it and most people won't ever find out if they are capable because they just won't try they don't believe right. in themselves so they just never do it and that's where we want to inspire people to say hey come out and get after it. And if the worst case is you don't finish, as long as you gave 100%, then that's that's a huge win in itself. If you come out and you don't finish 22 miles, you let's say you get 20, but you are just drained. Like you put 100% and you left it all out there on the trail. That is a massive win itself. And in this specific case, you gave back a substantial amount of money to the Northeast Ohio Foundation for Patriotism, which is a, a phenomenal organization. I think we're super lucky to be able to, to get to work with them. And you did 20 freaking miles. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. That's incredible. And you right. probably were the person that thought, ah, oh, there's no way I could do that. There's no way I could even get 20 miles. I could probably only get 10. But it's incredible what happens when you're out there surrounded by like-minded, positive people it's amazing. Your mind quits way, way before your body ever goes, for sure. It does. Like, I've already talked to a few people about this, this event, and they're like, oh, 22 miles, man. That's a, that's long, man. That's a lot of miles. I'm like, it is. It's 22 miles. It's supposed to be challenging. But I, I promise you, if you came out and you put in the effort, you, you'll be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And they just, of course, you don't think you, you've never done that, but most people that are going to come out here have never done 22 miles before. So I understand that it can be hard to believe that you can do 22 miles because you, you don't have any evidence, but that's where faith comes in. And Callie and I had that conversation. It's like, you, you have to have some faith in yourself. Like, right. you can do it. You you can do it. Maybe, maybe you won't make it in time. Maybe you can't carry that amount of weight. But you'll never know whether you can or not if you don't come out and try. And you can say that about anything in life. If you've always dreamed about starting a business or going for that big promotion and you're just too afraid, you're afraid of the unknown. No matter what you do, everything is unknown. Some things are more predictable, but have the courage and, and have the discipline to allow yourself to find out whether or not you are capable. And and then if you're not capable, maybe it's just you didn't train enough. Train more. Do something harder. Learn oh, more yeah. to feel better. You know? It's a process. Like we always say everything's a process. It's not about the it's not about the outcome. You're supposed to focus on the process and enjoy it along the way. Now I would not I would not come out and do twenty two miles if I've never walked a mile. Like you have to <laughs> you have to train for this. Like, yeah, Smart you can't goals. just go from couch to twenty two mile ruck. You're gonna to have to maybe get in some some rucks before that. Yeah, for sure. Let's let's talk about the details around the events a little bit. Well, let's let's got, back up and let's what is a ruck? Because a lot yeah. of people are like don't know what a ruck is. Yeah, what's yeah, a ruck? That's and it that's a great question, Randy. And it was funny because I think that we take for granted sometimes the same way with any communication. Like you have to you have to know your audience, right? And a lot of people that are going to want to come out and do this 
probably have never done a ruck before. So a ruck march is simply, think of it as a hike. You're going on a hike with a designated amount of weight in your backpack. And so it, it's a military thing. We obviously have to carry substantial amounts of weight on our back when we're in the military, when we're going out into the field. You can't always put everything out on a truck. So in basic training, for instance, we would do, I think we did what, like a five mile, a seven mile, and then like a 12 mile or something like that. Yeah, 12 miles was the last one. Yeah, 12 miles was the last one. And I will tell you, I bet you a lot of the people that were in my basic training class did not believe that they could go out there and do 12 miles. But it is incredible what you can accomplish when you have drill sergeants screaming at you. The, the <laughs> but it's the same thing. It's like, you know, it, it, you can do it. It's just a matter of believing that you can or not. And guess what? Those drill sergeants are there to believe in you. They're there to help you believe in yourself to accomplish these tough physical things and mental things that go into the military as well. But anyway, ultimately it's walk it's walking a very long distance with a weighted pack on. And one important thing to keep in mind that a regular backpack is not the same as a rucksack. So that is hundred percent accurate. Yeah. You want to make sure that your, your backpack is a, either a backpacking, like hiking type backpack where they make specific ruck march, like our rucking backpacks, and it has a frame and most importantly it has a waist belt and that waist belt is where is what carries the weight because if you put let's say you want to you want to ruck with 50 pounds and you put 50 pounds in a regular backpack and your traps are carrying that weight for 22 miles i promise you you will not make it our good friend nate who produced the video uh, <laughs> on sunday he learned that very quickly and that was that was my fault so taking ownership of that i forgot that he wasn't on facebook so he wasn't seeing all the details that we were posting and i forgot to tell him and then putting ownership back on nate he didn't ask either <laughs> like hey what should i know about this so nate i'm calling you out on that too taking taking some ownership there as well but i mean within a mile he was i mean he had 50 pounds in that bag and you also want to put your weight towards the top of your load. So shove a bunch of clothes in your rucksack and then put like, you know, your 20, 30, 40 pound dumbbell, whatever it is that you're weighing it down with, put that towards the top because that's going to make a huge difference as well. Well, I can tell you when I, I did a 20 mile ruck last year and like when I initially started training for it, I was just using a regular backpack and I quickly found that that, that was not a comfortable experience. And, and I wasn't doing long walks. I was doing like two to three miles and I was like, my traps and shoulders were beat up. And I was like, I'm going to have to invest in like a good rucking bag. And I did. And it, it may, it is, it is going to cost some money, but it is a tremendous difference. T tremendous. And yeah, also for the people who okay. are like, Cause there's people out there that are like, Oh, Oh, you're not running. It's not a run. Do not, do, do not think that this is going to be easy. Like putting 50 pounds on your back and walking 20 miles. I don't care who you are. That is going to be a difficult task to do. So those of you that are thinking are like, Oh, it's not a run. So it's easy. It's just a walk. This is, it's not a regular, like stroll down the street. This is, this is, it's tough. That's why it's yeah. called tough rucks. Yeah. Idea. And this, this is the first one and, and they're going to get more challenging. So, Oh, absolutely. Not all of them They're They won't all be, you know, incredibly brutal, but the whole point of these things is to, is to, is to figure out what your limits are, is to test your mental toughness because it gets gr grueling out there. Even after 10 miles, like, again, we were having a good time, but 10 miles is, it's a, that's a long ways to walk, especially up and down hills with that weight that you're carrying and that's exactly what it what it's meant to do is test that mental and physical toughness. And um, so again, so November 11th, 2023, Veterans Day, we're going to be hosting this event. And that is at Lakeshore Reservation in Perry, yep. correct? In the beautiful Perry, Ohio, right on Lake Erie. Like you're going to be walking down this path and the lake will be right there. You'll be able to see it. Could be frozen, could, could not be frozen. It all depends on the, the weather of Northeast Ohio. <laughs> Yeah, and that's going to make it, you know, I thought about, I didn't even, I hadn't really thought about that, but that makes it, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be cold. You're going to have a lake, you know, that wind coming off that lake. It's not warm. I can tell you from plenty of times of tailgating in the Muni lot that that, that right. lake air gets pretty cold. <laughs> well, no, November in Northeast Ohio, it could be warm. Like we have no idea. It could be, it, it could be snowing or it could, it could be 80. It could be anywhere much. from a hundred to five degrees. <laughs> plan accordingly. 
yeah, layers. So. Layers are important. Hey, and I will say that's actually another really good point that I hadn't thought of now is if you are coming out to do this, don't bundle up. You are going to get very warm as you walk. And if you sweat profusely, you are going to get sick because you're going to be soaking wet. I learned that the hard way in basic training some days because I went in the brutal cold in Oklahoma. And, you know, some of us would sneak our, our waffle tops underneath of our uniforms and hope we didn't get caught. And because when we were laying out there to start, they were like, they would, I remember one time for our longest rock, there was piles of snow and they would make us pull guard while laying in or pull security. I'm, I'm talking jujitsu in my head, pull guard, <laughs> pull security. Um, so they would make us pull security by laying in those snow piles. And if, you know, for the most part, we were wearing gloves and our, just our regular uniform. So it is freezing cold. And then you would step off, you'd walk for a mile or two, you'd start sweating, you'd stop again. It was brutal. But, um, you know, again, that's the point. The point is to test that mental and physical toughness and to see what you're made of and to prove to yourself that you, you can do these things again. But back to that. So September, or excuse me, November 11, 2023, Veterans Day. Perry, Ohio, Lakeshore Reservation, and we are partnering, I mentioned earlier, but it's the Northeast Ohio Foundation for Patriotism. Randy, you found this group, and the phone call we had with them the other day was absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, I I, I actually, like, stumbled upon them, like, because we were, like, our yeah, goal was, was to, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I didn't, like, intentionally seek them out. I was, I mean, like any other research, I was just Googling and trying to find out, like, what are some local some veteran foundations near us that we could partner with and, and use to help raise some money for some vets. And like, why, why do we want to raise money for vets? Like when we got into this, like we were vets, we want to give back to that community. Like, I feel like when, when you get out of the service, like it's kind of like uh, they forget. Oh, well, see you later. <laughs> right. And like, yeah, there's the VA, but like, if you've ever worked with the VA, it's like a long drawn out process. It's like, it's not easy to get like veteran benefits. Like you have to go through a shit ton of paperwork and you're going to go to several doctor's appointments. And it, like people, sometimes they just need some assistance. And this foundation is, is amazing. Like the things that they do, it, it's not just like one thing, like they're doing several different things to help out the veteran community. And like we thought we were just going to have a conversation with them and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, here's a link. Yeah, and we'll take the donation. Gonna, right. And no, like they're, they're partnering up with us. They're going to put our info out there and, and build this event up so that we can get as many donations as possible. Yeah. And that was the incredible part. So Northeast Ohio foundation for patriotism again, and the, the easier way to say that is Neopat. So I think Neopat. Moving forward, we're gonna we're gonna say Neopat because the Northeast Ohio Foundation for Patriotism is it's a long, it's a mouthful. Yeah, yeah, or a mouthful. But they they've donated over four million dollars to families in need in the Northeast Ohio area. So they cover twenty counties, and that's an incredible amount of money. And what we really would like to do. So I was I was I shared it with you, Randy, but I don't know if you've gotten a chance to look at it. But I was I was writing our vision. For and I want your input on it, on it, obviously. So when you get a chance, take a look at that. But I just started writing our vision for ideal tough rucks and what we really wanted to do. And part of it, again, like you said, supporting the veteran community because we are veterans. We've been blessed, you know, in our lives to not have to go through those unfortunate circumstances, whether it's battling mental illness or, well, you know, I I say that and I I have battled some of those things, but. Um, you know, battling mental illness, being homeless, or being in fear of losing your home, or not being able to get the health care that you need. You know, we've been lucky enough for the most part to, to not have to worry too much about those things. But there are people out there that, that are in some really tough situations. And like you said, so imagine, imagine putting yourself in the shoes of a veteran who had gone through four deployments had lost a bunch of friends is suffering substantially for PTSD. Uh, from PTSD, and then they're on the verge of losing their house while they're trying to just keep their lives together from a mental standpoint. And then having to go through this entire long drawn out process with the VA. Like that's a, that's a lot to ask anybody, let alone somebody dealing with, with those mental health issues. Um, you know, so we want to try to do something to make that process easier for them and be able to get Funding. So what I was talking about in the vision was really helping with 
veterans getting either getting homes or preventing them from losing their homes. And I think eventually what we'll want to do is start our own foundation of 5013C to be able to do that. But for right now, we're super lucky to have found Northeast or, or Neopat. They're going to help with the marketing. They're going to push this out to their network. And I'm really hoping to do that, you know, that, that this thing takes off. So we have 100 tickets available. 50% of the tickets, uh, ticket sales will go right back to the Northeast Ohio for patriotism. So that's well, how, much is the, how much does a ticket cost? So ultimately, so it's a hundred dollar donation. Um, and then with taxes and fees and everything, because that's the world that we live in, uh, it's hundred and it, kind of, it comes out to like $116. Again, at least $50 of that is going to go back to Neopat. And then we are also, our goal is to raise $25,000 total. And then after expenses, after um, putting some money back into the business so we can continue to do this moving forward, we're shooting for hopefully right around 15,000, I think is, is, is where we're shooting for to give back to Neopat. And again, the more sponsors we get, the more money we can give back to Neopat because that sponsorship money is basically, it's covering the expenses and then anything left over is going to Neopat. And that, that's something that we want to continue to do for Veterans Day each year is really focus on not making money for our business. It's really focusing on generating a substantial amount of money for the veteran community. And then the rest of the Ruck events that we do, we're going to focus on, we want to give 25% back to a veteran foundation. Maybe that's Neopat, maybe that's our own foundation in the future. And then 5% of everything else that we do. So whether that's coaching revenue, whether that's t-shirts that we're going to be getting into. So Rock Lake Focus t-shirts, um, you know, 5% of all of that revenue is going to go back to veteran, uh, veterans in need, veterans and their families in need, I should say. So it's, it's we have a, a lofty goal. My, my ultimate goal, and I wrote this in there, was to give, I would love to be able to give like $250,000 a year back to the veteran community. And that's a big goal. That is a, that is a huge goal. But that's why we got into this. We didn't get into this simply to just make money for ourselves. We got into oh, no. this because we wanted to give back. And we didn't get into it because we thought it was going to be easy. Like we $250,000 to say that we're going to raise $250,000 a year to give back to the chair, to, to veterans and their families. That's a big freaking goal. And that's not going to be easy. That's going to take a lot of hard work in order to do it. But and if, hopefully we can do more. Yeah, hopefully we can do more. And that's just the minimum. Yeah, if we can give back even more, that'd be great. And uh, no, I'm excited. I'm excited to, to get this started with you. And it's uh, another thing I'll say is it's incredible to enjoy what we're doing. It's, it's hard, but it's right now. No, this is a lot of work. There's a lot of planning that goes into this. It's a lot of paperwork. Like I don't like sitting at a computer and doing all this shit, but like knowing the, like the outcome of it, like, I mean, actually not dreading the process. Like we got yeah. to speak to some people that we probably would never have spoken to before. We're planning an event that's going to be hosting a hundred people. And well, like, we're in charge of that. Like, it's, it's crazy. Like, cause like a year ago, like we, we were, we were just having like, we, what the hell we were, doing. Like, we were yeah. just sitting down, just shooting the Throwing shit. Out like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Like, yeah, this has been a cool experience. And like the yeah. ticket you were talking about, it's a hundred dollars and yes, there's taxes and fees. And we're saying that fifty dollars is going back to Neopat, but you're you're also getting a T-shirt when you register. So everybody that registers will get a T-shirt, and you also have full access to the aid station. So we're gonna have fuel there for you, um, food, like gasoline, some, like not you know fuel for your body, and then uh, some okay. some ways to hydrate because you're gonna want to hydrate and you're gonna want some electrolytes and you're gonna want to fuel up because this is not. I mean, this is going to take you at least six and a half hours, probably at the minimum. Yeah. And you're going to want, you're going to, you're going to need some things. So yeah. the ticket is not just all going back to us. It's going to all of those things. Yeah. And there's going to be some Neopad is going to give us some big flags for the finish line. So it's going to be a very patriotic event. We're going to have the national anthem to get us kicked off. It's going to be awesome. And yeah, for what Randy was saying, the snacks and everything, don't expect freaking Doritos. And <laughs> those won't food. make you feel good when you're, when you're working. <laughs> no, if you want junk food, you better bring it yourself because we will not be supplying that, no. <laughs> but we will be supplying that fuel for your body. Like you said, and I, I think 
you know, as these continue to grow and develop, they're just going to get, you know, bigger and cooler and we're going to be able to do more. So, right. We got big, big dreams for this. Big dreams. Big dreams. Big dreams. I want to be doing, I was looking, so I was looking at Go Ruck and they're doing like something like 138 events a a year, which is incredible. And that's an, that's a great organization too. So I'm not, I'm not, this is friendly competition, but when I wrote that vision statement, I want to be the number, I want Ideal Tough Rucks to be the number one rucking brand in the country within the next five years. And that is selling apparel at some point, you know, boots, I, you know, right. everything that goes along with this stuff. Because the cool thing is, yes, if you want a good pair of boots, those are pretty expensive. If you want a good rucksack, that's pretty expensive. But if you really break it down, if you make this your thing, this is your fitness thing, it's way cheaper than a gym membership. It's way cheaper than, you know, think about it from a gas perspective. If I could go out in my neighborhood right now, I could throw on my backpack and I could go walk for 10 miles and burn a crap load of calories, get a killer workout in for pretty much no money at this point. My backpack I've, or my, my backpacking backpack I've had for like five years now. So that's more than paid for itself. You know, I, I bought a hundred dollar pair of boots that are broken in now and are super comfy. You know, it's just, you know, it, it's a, it's a cheap, easy, effective way to go out there and get after it. And we love And that. it's, it's a low impact. So if you're dealing with injuries, like it's not like the pounding that running is going to cause. So it's a low impact right. workout and it's good. St- it's good stuff. And we're, we're trying to build a community around here, you know, get those like-minded people out there and it makes it more enjoyable when you're out there enjoying and having a good time with what you're doing. Yeah, what what better way to honor veterans and the community of veterans than to go out and do shit that we do in the military? Go out exactly. and really get after it. Well, That's where rucks come from. It right? comes from the military. Yeah, it comes. I didn't know this until the other day, where I looked it up. But it comes from the Ro- Roman legionnaires. That that was where rucking started. I had no idea that it dated back that long. I wonder what yeah, their backpacks. I their just learned that like. just now. And, and and it doesn't have to be a ruck. So if you don't have a ruck, like a weighted vest will work. Put on, yeah. Throw on a weighted vest and walk in that. If, you, if you're not ready for the rucking portion, like we're not requiring you to carry a ruck. Like 22 mile walk is a challenge in itself. So if you, if you can't carry the weight, come out and walk 22 miles. Yeah, come walk 22 miles. However, we do want to clarify that in order. So if you do finish the 22 miles within eight hours, you do get a an ideal tough rocks patch specifically designed for the March for Heroes, and we'll have different ones for each event. But in order to do that, so you have to finish the 22 hour or 22 miles in eight hours or less. And if you weigh 150 pounds or less, you have to carry at least 20 pounds. And if you weigh 150 pounds or more, you have to carry at least 30 pounds. Now, now if you're a six foot four, 205 pound guy and 30 pounds doesn't seem challenging enough for you, feel free to add more weight. However, be mindful again, if you've never done this before that extra, let's say I go, I'm like, ah, 30 pounds isn't, isn't enough. I'm going to do 50 pounds. Well, 20 more pounds over 22 <laughs> miles. It's a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight. It's going to add up. So again, just be mindful physically. We want you to challenge yourselves, but we also want you to be you know, smart about it, especially if this is the first time that you've ever done this. Yeah, because 30 pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but 30 pounds for 22 miles, which is going to probably be about a seven hour time segment, that's going to, it's going to take its toll on your body. Yeah, yeah. You are going to be sore the next day. You're going to be sore as hell. So we highly encourage you take an ice bath after the event. If you've never done one of those, that's another great way to challenge yourself physically and mentally. I did. (laughs) Oh man, I really got into ice baths over the winter and we had them outside at the gym and they would just sit outside for water. I went and it was like 17 degrees outside the one day. There was like probably six inches of slush on the top of the water when I got into it. And that was one of the most challenging experiences in my life. 90 seconds of just pain. It, yeah. it did you not probably, feel good. You didn't even have to put ice in there, did you? No, didn't have to put any ice in there. And but but what I will say is yes, it sucks while you're in there, but the amount of, you know, like the the elevation and the level of recovery that I get from stuff like that, I stretch every single day now, which has been incredibly life changing. Last night, got back to the house. I go to bed by between like nine and ten every night. Got home at like eleven last night. 
still stretched because I just know that if I don't, my hips, my hamstrings, my groin, all of that, it's just going to hurt in the next day and be tight. So I've just created that habit where, again, I don't even have to think about it. I'm like, I'm going home and I'm going to stretch. It wasn't like I had to talk myself into it. It's so beneficial, stretching, the sauna, but again, just make sure that after the event, you're you're taking that proper rest and recovery and you're taking care of your body because it's going to- You're it's hydrating, gonna hydrating before and after the event. Before, during, and after, yes. Yep. And part of hydration is proper nutrition. So don't freaking fast for two days before <laughs> a 22 mile fucking rock and would, Please be smart. That wouldn't be smart. No, that'd so, be real dumb, but we will have EMS on site uh, just in case. And- you can find the events on Eventbrite. So just Google or when you're in Eventbrite, search for Ideal Impact Coaching and you will be able to find the Ruck event. We also have this posted all over social media. LinkedIn, it is all over Facebook, the gram, Instagram, the Twitter, everything. the X, whatever the hell the tweeter, Twitter is now. Old Twitter. <laughs> that you want to see the new Twitter end zone? <laughs> the touch on thing? What do you call that? And then you tweet her in the end zone. So else? one more time. This is the Ideal Tough Rucks March for Heroes. This is taking place on November 11th, 2023 at Lakeshore Res Reservation in Perry, Ohio. This event will, the sign-ins for it start at 7 a.m. And our goal is to step off by 8. So get there early get signed up, get some stretching in. We're going to kick off with the national anthem around 7.50 and then 8 a.m., boom, we're going. And it's just a one-mile loop. It's a one-mile loop, so you're just going to keep coming back around. But if you need that aid station, that aid station will be right there where you started. So anytime you come around, you can go there. You can get some hydration. You can get some fuel. You can get any blisters checked out by the medics. And then, boom, right back out on the path, and you keep going until you hit 22. Yeah, yeah, no, it's going to be great. We'll continue to talk about it. We'll continue to promote it. We're going to be reaching out to the local news channels. Hopefully, maybe some of it, they'll be there, uh, you know, in, in really making this an event and enjoyable at the same time. So we're stoked for all of that. We're stoked to get after it. Randy and I are actually going to do our 22 miles before the event. So that way, we're there. We're able to host. We're able to run around, make sure that everybody has everything they need. But I'm doing a 12 mile rock here in a couple of weeks. I'm going to do a 16 mile and an 18 mile all before Randy do, you know, and I do the 22 miles and hopefully we can get Brian out there for the 22 miler with us as well. Um, you know, Brian, Brian has a, he's not a teacher and he's not self-employed yet. So he, he, his schedule is a little bit less flexible than, than Randy and I is right now. And he's got to work. Yeah. What a bum. What an idiot. <laughs> Just quit your job. Quit right. your job. Makes it harder when you have kids. I could just quit my job. It wasn't that That's true. Do kids do. I mean, just just that response, a little added responsibility because you have to, you know, make sure that they stay alive. Yeah, and and like we talk about that with fitness too, and we're gonna wrap up the show here in a second. But even though you have kids, you can you can. It's all about your priorities. Do you do you? prioritize your physical health and longevity enough to find 20 minutes, 20 minutes, three times a week. I will give you anybody out there who is like, ah, I don't have time. I text me, email me. I will give you, you time. three 20 minute workouts that will smoke the living dog shit out of you <laughs> for 20 minutes. And I promise you, you can find the time. You can find the time. It's a matter of training yourself to stop saying, I don't have the time to saying that's not my priority because that's really what it comes down to. It's all about I mean, priorities. I'm not saying that I've, other things can't be priorities. I'm just saying. I've had uh, this conversation with a few people and I just, I challenge them to write down like their, their daily routine. I'm like, just write down what you do from when, when you wake up until you go to bed. And I guarantee you, you will find there's plenty of downtime where you're either sitting on your ass watching TV, you're laying in bed, screwing or finger fucking your phone <laughs> thumb fucking your text box all doing all those things like you, you'd be surprised like how much free time you actually have where you can fit this stuff in. and yes Listen. you you might have to wake your ass up earlier in the morning and get it done but hey that's where the discipline kicks in yeah that's what Cal Callie I was not that I'm not super proud of her all the time but I was very proud of her today she said that she's like I know she's like it's on me I could have just gotten up earlier and <laughs> it's like she was saying I think partially to 
be a smart ass to me but <laughs> also at the same time saying it yeah i mean you're right like you know if you don't want to go that's why i get up early is because i don't want to be rushed throughout my day i want to get up i want to have my me time i want to do my meditation i want to do my gratitude i want to have my time to do all that so that way i don't have to do it throughout the day and i can focus on other things and again yeah that takes just and, and you get it done in the same. morning it's done though yeah. like you don't have to worry about doing it later it's done it's done it's, done. it's freedom it's discipline done. equals freedom the more discipline you become the more free you become because you and and we'll get into that but that's again that's a jocko term but it's it's so true it is so true well trust so, me anyway. as, a, as a teacher i i take it i take it i don't sleep till nine o'clock or anything but I, i'm not getting up what i when i normally do when i'm working so i i like to sleep in a little later in the summer like i'm getting up between 6 30 and 7 and, and in two weeks, my ass is going to be getting back up again at 4.45. Am I looking forward to that? Absolutely not. I don't want to get up at 4.45 in the morning. But like I, I have goals, and I want to get these things done. And with having kids and having a job and having all my other responsibilities, I got to get my ass up at 4.45 and get it done. Otherwise, it's not going to get done. And listen, hey, I don't, so recently my alarm's been going off at four, um, maybe trying to get out of bed by 4.30, I, you know, as long as I'm out of bed by five, I'm happy with that because that gives me plenty of time to get everything done that I need to. I can either get up at four or 4.30 or five o'clock and get my shit done, or I can not have enough time to work on the important things throughout my day and never achieve the goals, never accomplish the goals, never achieve the results, never achieve the success that I want to. So discipline now for huge results in the future. I mean, we talk about this all the time. It's just, it's, it's how you word it. Like I've heard people word it, word it as like, are you willing or unwilling? Are, what's your suffering? Like chosen suffering, unchosen suffering. So do you- This is how I word it. This is, you wanna know how I word it? Sure. Stop being fucking lazy. <laughs> Like, really, that's what it comes down to is you can make every fucking excuse. There's always going to be an excuse, and it drives me batshit crazy. Oh, I, um, I'm, I was late to work because there was traffic. No, you didn't fucking plan accordingly. Take ownership of it. Stop being lazy. Leave 15 minutes early if you have to. Like, it, it, or it, yes, is life going to get in the way sometimes? Sometimes it will, but even in those situations where it feels like that was completely out of your control, think about what you could have controlled. And the biggest thing is just stop making excuses. You can never, you're never going to accomplish big things in your life if you give excuses power. Like that's what you're doing. Again, you relinquish power in your life when you make excuses, when you blame other people, when you blame other things, when you blame other circumstances, you are giving, you're allowing yourself to be powerless and stop fucking doing that. Stop being lazy. Get your ass up off the fucking couch. Go do something hard. We're, we're literally creating opportunities for you to do hard things with a bunch of supports for a great cause. And like, Take advantage of that. It, it's a beautiful thing. And in the movement of your body and being able to do those things and being able to do those things as you progressively get older. I was today, I was at jujitsu and my buddy church was, he was like, dude, you're 36. You're almost 37. I'm like, yeah. He's like, I thought you were 30. And I'm like, first of all, thank you for the compliment. And secondly, it's pretty fucking amazing that if you put the right things in your body and you move it regularly, the results that you can achieve from doing that instead of looking like a fat dad bod having 36 year old. I mean, 38 year old Randy is in better shape than college wrestling Randy. Like college football guy was fat. I mean, overall, like shape. Yes, like I could do certain things. Like I, I was stronger. Like I could lift more then. But like the things that I can do now, I couldn't. I couldn't do them. I'm more flexible. My my cardio is better. Like it's. Do you just, think 38 year old Randy could kick 24 year old Randy's ass? Yes. Yeah. 36 year old Kyle could totally kick 24 year old Kyle's ass. Like not even a fucking question. Like I know for you like, wrestled. Yours a little bit different, but. 38 year old Randy could beat up 36 year old Randy. Like when I first started jujitsu, it was uh, go, 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 go. And then I would gas <laughs> out. Like, I don't do that anymore. Like I'm smarter about it. And like, it's not only about growing physically, it's about growing emotionally and mentally as well. Yeah. 100%. If you just 
focus. That's the, if you just focus on being, one of my, my favorite affirmations is I'm better today than I was yesterday. Maybe that's 0.0001%, but as long as I do, if I do a 0.001% every single day for the next 10 years, that's going to add up to big results. Now, hopefully it's more than that, but some days it's going to be more, some days it's going to be less. It's just a matter of doing a little bit at a time and getting better and better and better. So, and some days you're like, you're not, you're not going to be better than you were the day before. Like that's going to happen. And when yes. that does happen, you can either beat yourself up about it and let those days continue on. Or you can be like, all right, that happened, I'm learning from it. And then you move on. Well, and I would, I would argue that in that case, then you do get better. You, you get better. It's okay to make mistakes. Like well, you're getting again, better, not physically getting maybe better. in that aspect, but you sure. are mentally. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Maybe you fuck up. Like today you said that you didn't have a great day at jujitsu, right? Same, same for me. I, I went back to jujitsu for the first time in four months. I knew that it wasn't going to be great, but I'm better for going today than I was if I hadn't. And I'm better mentally because I was okay. I understood that, hey, this is my first time back where old Kyle, when I first started jujitsu, I'm like, I got, I'm, I'm bigger than everybody. I'm stronger. I'm going to go out there and kick everybody's ass. And I just got freaking humbled and I would get mad about it. I would get so pissed about it. Now it's like, hey, I'm going to go there today. I know this isn't going to be my best performance. Just focus on putting yourself in good positions focus on making it very difficult for the other person, play good defense, don't gas yourself out like you did. And by doing that and having that focus, I definitely got a lot better, both physically from getting back into jujitsu and then mentally from being able to control my mindset more. I can tell you like nothing makes me happier. Well, I mean, I, I can't say nothing makes me happier. <laughs> it's like, be like careful a, what you say. It's a loaded statement. But like when I get a, a text message from a client who is like, hey, I slipped up today. I didn't meet my goal. But I'm I'm refocused, and tomorrow I'm gonna yeah. get after it. And I'm like, yep. that's the right attitude. Because like, right when you first start working with clients, it's like oh, I slipped up today, so fuck it. Like tomorrow, yeah, it, right. it, it turns into just like a complete derailment where they're like, oh, I slipped up on one meal, so then I just ate shit the whole day, and then I laid around and did nothing. Now they're not doing that anymore. They're like, ah, I slipped up today. I'm gonna refocus, and tomorrow I'm gonna kick ass. Yeah, time to get after it tomorrow. That's the, yes, what you said. It's about consistency, not perfection. You're gonna fuck up. We fuck up too. I, I drank two energy drinks this week when my limits won. I felt like I needed it that day. Did I actually need it? No, but I'm like ninety something percent accurate with that habit. So is it the end of the world that I had one more energy drink? Is it the end of the world that the other day I? forgot to set my alarm and I woke up at five 30 instead of five o'clock. Like, no, it's, it's, I'm a night, like I'm over 90% on almost every single one of my habits. That is what matters. That is what causes the growth. I'm never going to be perfect with any of those things. No. And then like, if you let it affect you, then it, it's going to ruin the rest of your day. Like you mentioned my jujitsu experience today. I got submitted by a third degree black belt. Well, no shit. He should be submitting me. He's a third degree <laughs> black belt. But I, I got pissed at myself and I started beating myself up over it. And then that led into the next few roles with other people being complete shit because I was pissed at myself and I just shut down. So that's the wrong attitude. Like that's the wrong mindset. Yeah, you get submitted. It's, it's just like, like jujitsu to me is like, it relates so well to life because like it, it's never going to go perfectly. And you're going to, you get humbled every time you go there, even when you're making progress and you know, you're getting better. There's somebody else who's going to whoop your ass. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. That's, that's it, why I love it. One of the biggest things I love is like, you can be small in jujitsu and still just whoop big dudes asses like i've had some really really tough roles with smaller guys and, well i'm small so i don't even, really mind that part but yeah i know that's a good thing no i'm saying it's a good <laughs> thing We're, it's a good thing for both people it's a good thing for the smaller guy because it's nice to be able to go out there and compete like it's a little bit different in like boxing where if i'm six four and you're a small guy could you beat me sure but chances are the odds are heavily in my favor and same thing with jujitsu like yeah, I mean, if you and I are both, we have 10 years of grappling experience and we're both purple belts, you know, okay, yes, I might have an advantage if our technique is very similar. I might have an advantage by being bigger than you. But 
I go out there and get worked by purple belt. I'm a blue belt. I go get worked by purple belts that are half my size. You know, I, there's there's some really, really good females that I roll with that are not nearly as big and strong as I am, but they're freaking great grapplers. So it's just, it's humbling in that regard. And it's awesome because you know that as a smaller guy, you're out there, I'm, I'm going to beat the shit out of this big dude who doesn't know what the hell he's doing, right. which is a great feeling as well. I just like the the constant opportunity for growth, like just like life, like, like you never, like, like there's no complacency there. Like you could be, you could be a black belt and then there's another black belt that's going to be better than you. Like there's, there's always room for growth. And even if like, you're, you're like a stud, there's always like a position where you could probably improve and someone gets the best of you in that one position. So like, there's always room to grow and it's, that's what makes it fun for me. Like, cause you're never gonna, you just never like reach a level where you're gonna be like, ah, oh, too good at jujitsu. Yeah, that's why I love, I love, I love jujitsu and running both because there's so many analogies, like you said, for life and in both of those things. All right, we've been talking for an hour and a half, but if you take nothing else away from this episode, Ideal Tough Rocks March for Heroes, November 11th, 2023. Register on Eventbrite. We're going to get the link put up on our website, idealimpactpodcast.com, and it will be all over our social media, both our, our, you know, the Ideal Impact pages and then Randy and I and Brian's page as well. So be on the lookout for that. I mean, I really can't add anything to that. I mean, you just I know I it all up. <laughs> I freaking nailed it. You got yeah. one more thing to say, I think, though. Well, yeah. I mean, if you, can, <laughs> if you can't come out and, and do the hike, like there's going to be a link where you can just donate as well. Cause again, we're not just, this is not just about the hike. This is also giving back to veterans. So if you can't make the hike, please consider donating as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That goal of $25,000 is not going to be an easy goal to hit, especially since this is the first time that we've ever done anything like this. So um, we appreciate everybody out there is listening, all of the support, all of the you know, sharing the, even, yeah. And even if you can't that let's, let's, you can't do that. Let's say you, you just you cannot swing a hundred dollars or anything like that. First of all, if you can do less, reach out to us and we'll figure it out. And if you can't do anything, we totally understand that economic times are crazy. You can help by sharing the event. So if you see us posting spread about the it, word. please go ahead and, and share it and spread the word. And um, we appreciate that just as much. Word. All, All right. right. Well, Randy, it was great as always. Looking forward to getting this one up live tomorrow. That's that's going to be our quick <laughs> turnaround time. That's yet, a quick so. turnover right there. Yeah. I'm Go glad ahead. that we were able to, to connect though and get this uh, get this recorded and get the word out about the uh, the March for Heroes. Hats off to the guy that does the editing. I knew that guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brother. Everybody Talk have a later. good one. Bye. Hey, everybody, if you liked what you heard today, please check us out on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And don't forget to head to Eventbrite and grab one of the 10 tickets available for our monthly Ideal Connect call. Then when you're ready to take the next step, message us on any of our social media pages to book a free coaching consultation call to see how we can help you start living your own ideal life. Thanks again for all of your love and support. And always remember, you have everything you need to achieve success. It's just a matter of believing.